What's going on, Packers fans? Aaron Nagler here. Billy Schmidt coming to you on the Carry the G Radio, the podcast. This week, Mark Murphy talked into a microphone, and he said a whole lot, and so did Matt LaFleur and Brian Gutekunst. Um, and we get to talk about it, Billy. Nags, he always does. Mark Murphy, that is. He always, when he talks into a microphone, it's can't miss because he's going to give you something that either you didn't realize you needed or you then find out you've been waiting for pretty much your whole life because that soundbite is always a one for Mark Murphy. Uh, usually, no doubt about it. I, I did love, we'll start, we'll, we'll, we'll go down the list here, right? Uh, let's start with the potential, and it's only that, the potential of the Green Bay Packers opening their season in Brazil against the Eagles. Now, Mark did let slip, or maybe it wasn't a slip, who knows, but he did let it be known that it is between the Packers and the Browns if you're the NFL, isn't it like it, it, it's the preference has got to be the Packers here, doesn't it? Listen, for a multitude of reasons, <laughs> I think there's right? a multitude of reasons. Number one is the fan base there and here. Number two is, I mean, sorry, I think their second game of the season. I don't think they necessarily want Deshaun Watson headlining the game <sighs> instead of Jordan Love and the Green Bay Packers. Right. Thank like, you. I mean, just it makes a whole lot more sense. Yeah, but. I don't know where you came down on it, Nags. Listening to it and hearing Mark, there was a very pointed reason as to why he brought up all the issues with playing right. in Brazil yep. instead of the positives that you pointed out to me, John Kuhn points out to me, and that everybody that will talk about it and understands it is, their mm. fan base is huge down there. Yes. That the NFL would love. Eagles might not like it. Talk about competitive advantages and disadvantages mm -hmm. if you have a big fan base there, but it seems to me that the Packers feel like they would be uh, giving on this, and they wanted to push back just a little bit. Maybe just a bit, and maybe some help from the league as mm -hmm. far as uh, all the logistics and everything that they would need to, uh, as, of course, and then probably on the backside of it, like in week, if that's week one, what does your week two look like? You better be at Lambeau, you yep. would hope, right? So I think there's uh, probably some messaging going on there, and we'll find out, you know, Mark said, I guess, next week. Pretty soon. Sounds like. so. Pretty soon, I would assume, because they have to have travel plans. The other part of it is, Nags, like, and I think you see the league operate this uh, this way a bunch of different times. When you do this and it, it's considered a favor, what right. is the league going to help you out with? You you hit it on the head. If they can help you out logistically, I think they'd take that. But they got their prize in the NFL draft, and now I think the NFL might be saying, Hey, we're we just, done with giving you favors. We just gave you a favor, okay? <laughs> we just gave you a favor. Now you help us out one more time. Yeah, that's entirely possible. Um, but I'm excited, man. I, I really hope. It. I really hope it happens. And I understand. Yes, there are logistics, and it is a challenge. But man, I really hope it happens. If for no other reason than the fan base in Brazil, because as you mentioned, yep. they are ravenous. They are legit. They are huge fans. They are diehard fans. Some of the most diehard fans I've ever encountered on this here internet. Um, yeah, I really hope it happens. I'd love the Packers to open up prime time in Brazil, of all places, against the Eagles, who, by the way, really fascinating team. Great matchup. If I mean, they have to play them, obviously, at mm -hmm. some point this season. Yep. And I'm looking forward to that game. But as disappointing as they were down the stretch last year, the Eagles, that is, you know, they are fascinating in the sense that they've got two new coordinators, right? Mm -hmm. Still got Jalen Hurts, who I think is incredibly talented. They've got a talent basically on both sides of the ball. I think that would be a phenomenal week one matchup for the Packers and just for the league to come yeah. like showcase their international. Two young quarterbacks who are both expected to be yeah. fixtures in the league. They came in the same draft class, and they're the last dudes of that group that were taken, right? But now they're right. both going to be incredibly well-paid men by the time that game kicks off. Right, by the time that kicks game off, kicks off, no doubt. I, uh, I think the Eagles are, and we were talking about different – rankings and hierarchies of the NFC and the win totals come on out and where prognosticators will group you. I still think the Eagles are one of the best teams in the NFC. And you mentioned Moore and Fangio, the two new coordinators might be the best time to get them early before they get things going. Or that could be the unscouted looks deal that you uh, hate to right? dread when they're changing some stuff up. That, that'd just be a fascinating deal with two big time names. Well, you mentioned the uh, the prognosticators, and, and Vegas has the initial win totals. I heard you talking about it on the radio the other morning. Well, the Packers at what? Nine and a half? Nine is, and a half. Is that so what they're far. sitting at? Yep. Yep. Give me the over on that. Come on. Now. 
Well, in Nags, they're they're expecting you to because they're and, and they the are. way that's that, how they the get way the they change it is that they skew the pricing on it. So if you're gonna pay, you know, say for a ten dollar bet, you're gonna bet fifteen dollars the way that the pricing is up to then grab, you know, your twenty five on the other end, the ten dollar profit and the fifteen that you bet on back. So they're expecting people to bet on it. That number is gonna shift, yes. and I think it's gonna go up I rather agree. quickly because many many people are gonna say hold on, this team won nine games last year and the defense was the biggest question. That's going to be even a bigger push, I think, towards the over than Jordan Love, which was the case everybody in the offense that everybody would think right out of, out of the gates is the reason why you'd hammer it. I would, 100%. But, you know, I'm a sucker. So there, we'll see. You as like the, making money, next. I, I do like making money. not here money. making friends. I'm here to make money. That's right. Show business, baby. Um, <laughs> we'll see how that changes throughout the offseason. The other thing Mark talked about, obviously, which made some waves, I guess, locally, but not so much, I think, Packers fans worldwide. I don't think they're so concerned about it, but the the breaking off of negotiations between the city and the Packers when it comes to the lease of Lambeau Field, there's a lot of, like, kind of behind the scenes, how the sausage gets made stuff that I don't think most people, most fans are probably interested in. Mm -hmm. But I do find it fascinating that Mark put their business in the streets, so to speak. You know, the fact that yeah, it's not, you know... It's not something he was going to probably trumpet, except for the fact that there was a article dropped in the paper that morning that he could then conveniently be asked about. It's like mm -hmm. so obvious that the Packers wanted this to get out publicly because this phone yeah. call from the mayor happened weeks ago. So it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, this is going on. Well, we want to try and curry some favor with our fan base, I guess. Um, it's just all that's a, that whole thing was very curious to me. Well, and, and I don't know where you fall in on it. I don't know that he would have said something about it. And as you said, kind of put the business out in the streets if he wasn't walking into his final year as the president, right? Yep. right? Like, I mean, if these were going to be his full negotiations for the next nine years, whenever mm -hmm. the lease is up, yeah. maybe he wouldn't be making that uh, situation that he is. But I also think that you want to put your thumb down on the scale a little bit more and maybe get one final deal passed right before mm -hmm. you walk out before you walk head. out one final uh one final thing to remember you by because right now his crowning achievement is going to be that nfl draft in 2025 well and i think that's a major component here Has right as far as especially when he's talking about okay we were going to do all this stuff to lambeau field and now we're not going to because of these halted negotiations it's like they're clearly trying to press the city to say look, we want to be this shining jewel, so to speak, when the draft comes to town. Mm -hmm. But your breaking off negotiations is making us stop construction or refurbishment or whatever of these areas of Lambo that was going to be so nice for the draft, but now won't be so nice. But it, I just, again, it's just weird to have this play out in public that way. Yeah, it, and it's different because it's it's so clear nobody's going anywhere, right? No, like the, the exactly. amount of posturing. Sorry, it's not going to be the Pulaski Packers as much as as fun as that would be to move to a Oconto. the Pulaski Packers. That's it's not going to work, right? Like <laughs> so both sides good. need each other too much. Right. But the tourism that Murphy, I can't remember the exact number off the top yeah. of my head, but it was a an lot. astronomical number yeah. of like the growth that they would expect after people watch and see Lambeau Field all in its glory throughout. Mm -hmm. That's Those are the people that are craving it. I I, yeah. I know he kind of said, like, oh, this isn't going to be as good for our fans. I haven't talked to many people that go to Packer games and say, wow, these concession stands, the <laughs> options suck. They are really driving me away from Lambeau Terrible. Field. <laughs> no fun. I, like, I can't even I can't even enjoy the I don't even know how I do enjoy the football game, knowing that the Came Miller Fab Light is just not strategically placed behind yes. me. I just, I don't know. And yeah. how dare it be 38 degrees instead of 36 degrees? I mean, like that. I, I didn't. I don't know that that is the biggest. I haven't run issue. into that fan in my yeah. trials and tribulations through Lambo yet. And that's a good. But point. you know what? Maybe they're hitting the Murphy Five, right? They might be sending him <laughs> questions each and every month. But I, I do think that it's. I, I think it's fascinating to see them. As I love the way that you put it and phrased it. Put the business out in the streets, just because yeah. generally it just it wouldn't be their play. It wouldn't be their, their hand, mo. That's no, I agree. I agree. Um, another thing that got, got talked about or, you know, uh, revealed, so to speak, uh, during the owners meetings and the kind of interviews and between the coach and GM, et cetera, Matt LaFleur saying he was caught off guard by the Aaron Jones release. And I think a lot of that is kind of overblown, but I do think it's interesting to hear that, you know, while everything was transpiring, 
Matt's not in those conversations, which yeah. we knew. We know that, right? That is a personnel conversation. That is a personnel decision. But it kind of speaks to, all right, that that is reflective of what they've talked about, right? Like, yes, Matt and Brian have their conversations. They are collaborative to a point. But at the end of the day, it's Brian's roster. Yeah. Like, no question about it. Yeah, and and I mean, I understand why. Right. You, you do have to be able to pull the emotion away from it. And when you lead the football team, it can be harder to to pull that emotion away from it. I'm, I'm not surprised that Matt was stunned because I also think this is this is a part of it. I don't know that they anticipated Jacobs being available and ready to sign day one of free wow. agency hour one. Right. And and get the deal that they had kind of shoehorned in for the running back position. So I wonder if that was one of the reasons why it got caught off guard. Like they still did anticipate that even though the reporting is that they broke off the negotiation on Saturday, Mm -hmm. I still think there was many people in the room that would say to a man on Wednesday, they may have thought they were going to come back to the table. Right. If they didn't get one of the big fishes, if they didn't kind of land what they expected to that 48 hour window. Yeah, I just, it, it is fascinating. I mean, I, I just hearken back to that hour, hour and a half where it felt like we were going to have Aaron time. Jones and Josh Jacobs in the same backfield. That That's a, that's a great kind of, you know, moment in Packers history that uh, unfortunately we just never got to see. Live it, it's going to be, it's going to be one of those, my favorite things to tell my kids about <laughs> back in the day is when the Packers had Josh Jacobs and Aaron Jones for an hour. <sighs> for about an hour. Yep. Um, another thing that came out of the owner's meeting, the, well, we talked pretty extensively last week about the potential, but now it is the mm-hmm. kickoff rule, which I'm excited. I know Keyshawn Nixon is very excited. Which uh, I love. I love that. You love the fact that the, the kickoff is going to be drastically different and there will be there will be returns. Mm-hmm. Like there there are going to be guys with the ball in their hand trying to weave through traffic, trying to get big gains. And I'm excited for it. I, I do think it's going to be very jarring those first couple games. You know, to see it's going to be staggering drastic, to see drastic difference on the kickoffs. Yeah. And and I also like it for a couple of different reasons. All the X's and O's deals that we talked about last week, mm-hmm. but also from just the standpoint of owning up to the fact of admitting that you could do some things differently and that good opportunities right. and good ideas yeah. can come from out of the box thinking like I, I know baseball did not want to go to a pitch clock for a number of years. However, last year, I don't think anybody that watches the game and enjoys it would debate that the game was worse with it being slowed up. However, it was. It was eye-opening. It was staggering right away, and players complained about it. I don't think players are going to complain about this one as much. I do think they're going to be more interested in it. And if anything, I think the other fun part to watch is going to be how it changes players that are special teams aces and the kind of body types and guys that you're getting there to be on the kickoff team. I just think it's going to add a huge element of the unknown to the NFL this year, which does it year in and year out. Some people complain about it and hate it. (laughs) I think it's fun, and it's a roll of the roulette wheel and see what's going to be different about the league this year. Yeah, and the creativity that I think you're going to see spring out from this kind of this rule and the kind of whole approach uh, for – Yeah, something that is very, very different than what we're used to, what we've seen over the years. Um, They wanted to shake it up, and they most certainly have. Uh, One other thing they have done, this competition committee, Billy, I tell you, the banning of the swivel hip drop tackle. Swivel Um, hip drop tackle. Not the hip drop tackle. No, swivel swivel hip hip drop tackle. Man, I'm with Charles Woodson. I'm with J.J. Watt. I'm with Richard Sherman. Notice how all the defensive players are against this. All the offensive players are like, oh, my guy got hurt. Yeah, we know. You mm-hmm. play football. I mean, I've gone on and on about this, but I just we, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on the fact that, you know, the defense yet again has been uh, targeted for, you know, well, we, we're going to need you to continue to find ways to defy the laws of physics when it comes to stopping ball carriers. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think about it more than anything is they're making it more and more difficult for defensive players to play fast, which is the best way to play defense, right? right. Which is the one, the way that you're most effective, add more things to think about the, the health and safety of it. They're never going to be able to show or show us the data that they fully 
gather in there, whatever it was, right. 20,000 20, plays. Yeah, God yeah, bless yeah. you. I'm not going to watch 20,000 plays, <laughs> right. John Mara, to tell me that that was exactly how you ended up figuring out right. that this was good, bad, or indifferent <laughs> for the league. Uh, my My biggest point of frustration with it is, we put so much on the officials in this game oh my gosh, yes. and continue to make it harder and harder for your least prepped employees mm-hmm. on game day. The only, the only group of employees that are integral to the success of your program day in and day out, Sunday in and Sunday out are in the building, the least, and you make it more difficult for them to do their jobs. Like you that's give them more to deal with. Yes. More to think about, more to yes. more to add subjectivity to. And Tom Pelissero goes on uh McAfee in the NFL network mm. and says, Wow, it's gonna be a lot more fines than penalties. And Pat goes, Yeah, it's gonna be a lot more fines than penalties. Until the one penalty in January costs somebody their season because it gives somebody an automatic first down with four minutes to go yep. when you're trying to get somebody on the ground, like you're trying to make a tackle. It's, yep. it's so difficult. I, I do though bet in whatever metric they brought together and mm-hmm. however many people they had slicing up the data <laughs> that it was 20% different in injury right. rate for right. that play where guys legs are being landed on. It's, it's ridiculous. It's not going to change. Uh, They're going to continue to make it more difficult to play defense until they're understanding that you are adding more ways of it being more dangerous for a defensive player to try to tackle somebody. You're only going to be able to strike zone them inside from just above the knee to to just under the shoulder. Yeah, that that's the thing, too. And we've seen a couple of instances now where guys have flown in trying to get after the quarterback and had to hold up or held up or, you know, brace for impact so they don't drive the quarterback into the ground who end up hurting themselves like yeah. these these things where defensive players are expected to do all the adjusting i'm with tom brady when he said you know off the nfl players you have to also take some ownership of this if you're an offensive player you know, like say a quarterback don't Protect put your guys yourself. in positions where they're yeah. going to get lit up don't put guys in positions where or if you're a guy with the ball in your hand you know use that sideline to your advantage like i just it just drives me nuts how I understand the reasoning behind it, especially from a you know a financial standpoint, mm-hmm. business standpoint. You want the guys who carry the ball to continue to be on the field, especially in the age of you know freaking fantasy football, daily fantasy, all this stuff. You want yep. those guys to be playing. I understand that, but man, it is a contact sport. It is a violent sport, and to have the onus so kind of overwhelmingly on one side of the ball to keep these guys safe to say all right well if you do this incorrectly we're going to break down this film millimeter by millimeter week to week and we are going to find you Mm -hmm. uh, but only on one side of the ball i i just i hate it as an old school head an old head i just i hate it it. someone's got to tell me where the fine money's going well traditionally it goes to a number of different charities that are agreed upon between the NFLPA and the and the league. Okay. Um. It cha- I think it changes up every year. I could be wrong about that, but I, I do know for a long time that's that's where that fine money is. Good. You're mark and, four. And I'd like to I'd like to have that be a celebration and a show because they're adding so many more ways for these players to get fined week in and week out yes. when you're finding dudes for their socks. Like oh my gosh. Finding- or the, the the tackles. The I mean, I think JJ Watt talked about this throughout the season last oh, year, yeah. where we, they've had like these ridiculous kind of fines for guys who are essentially just playing football. Mm-hmm. Like I'm now, this has happened on both sides of the ball, where you're lowering your head or, or you're tackling, and and you're like kind of putting your head down to make a tackle. Well, you didn't do it the proper way. We're gonna find you. It's like, man, you're playing this game at a million miles an hour. You're asking these dudes to like make pinpoint adjustments on the fly, full speed. It's absurd. It's patently absurd. My favorite part is I we say all of that, and I'll follow it up with this. It's not ruining the NFL. It's not going to yet ruin the NFL no. to the point where people are going to stop watching. No one's turning it people, off. Too many yep. people have been saying that they were going to turn it off for this, that, and the other reason for the last 10, 15 years. Yeah. Um. It's gonna. It's gonna be weird. But we are inherently 
a remarkably adaptive species. <laughs> We're going to adapt to watching football differently, right? Yes. Like how many different times can you watch a play? You talk about a quarterback leading his wide receiver across the middle. The Michael Pittman play this year yes. is a perfect one, perfect right? Perfect example. I watch that and the say, Garner Minshew throw, right? Yeah, we uh, we yep. get. I get it, right? I mean, yep. you're gonna get you're gonna get thrown out of the game for that hit. Do I like it? And is that the way that I think the game should be played because it's fair, foul, or indifference of the defense? Probably not. However, we have watched the, the game enough we're and we in. understand yes. it. Right. So I think we're going to be better at knowing and seeing this swivel hip drop tackle. But my favorite part is the unweighting themselves. I'm trying oh, to unweight myself start. every day and lose weight. <laughs> I don't know if that's what it means or if unweighting myself is at the Oval <sighs> Office here. Like, I mean, I just don't get it. Like, that's one of my favorite parts of it. Maybe uh, we'll understand. And maybe. Like the definition maybe we'll of come, pornography in the 69s. Will, we'll just know it when we see it. It will come to light over yeah. time. We will all become enlightened as a species when it comes to the unweighting of, unweighting uh, of each other. <sighs> unbelievable. So, Let's turn our attention now to something that is forward-looking in the sense of the Green Bay Packers, and this NFL draft that is happening now in a month, a little less than a month. Less than a month. Less, less than, than a month. month. Billy, are you excited? Are, are, have you got your lists That's of guys question. you want the Packers to take? Mm -hmm. uh, where are you in your draft process? Listen, uh, I love you. You asking me if I'm excited for the NFL draft, one of the worst questions you've ever asked on this podcast. <laughs> I am so excited for the draft. We got a we're month four, to go. You were four weeks away. Four yeah. weeks away. We when we talk this time in April, mm -hmm. on April 29th, yes, we'll sir. know all the new Green Bay Packers. Yes, That's an inherently an exciting thing. However, yeah. my favorite part about it is there's so many big guys that are gonna get drafted early. Yes, sir. That's an exciting proposition. The bigs are going to eat, no doubt. And the division is going to be vastly different looking. Now, whether or not that means that only one team goes and grabs their new quarterback of the future, I know another one wants to. Otherwise, if they don't, Minnesota has two two picks inside the top 25. Yeah. So we'd look at that on another year and say, wow, that team's going to get better. And the other one that just won the division – is unleashing new uniforms on draft day when I finally <laughs> like them. I know. Like, this is a great time in football, Nags. It's a great time in the NFC North. And the Packers have five picks on the first two days of the draft Let's when most go. people will watch. When yes. most people will watch. Us losers will watch on Saturday and be oh, very, very excited. Everything. But it's much different on month, on Thursday and Friday. Yeah, the Thursday and Friday thing is always good. I, I just, I don't know, man. I used to get so excited about the draft, but now it's like the lead up is so long. The ramp up is so meticulously kind of like overwrought at this point. There's so much analysis. It's like, mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I get I, I get kind of between two things. Like I to your point, yes, I'm very excited about the idea of there will be a whole new slew of Green Bay Packers for me to dive into, right? Yep. But man, this next month, people are gonna disappear up their own backsides about each and everything. And not just like the, the normal stuff, like mm -hmm. core, there's quarterbacks. Now the quarterbacks always drive the conversation and we're hearing this guy is better than that guy and blah, blah, blah. And like, I don't care about any of that, but now, you know, it's like, who could the Packers take? And it's RAS scores. Now everybody's pointing to RAS and thinking like, Oh, this guy's not athletic enough and the Packers will never take him, etc. Man, I just, can we just draft? Can they just draft tomorrow? They can draft this weekend. They could do it. If they wanted to, they could do it. Yeah, and and Nags, the this is how I'm gonna allow you to look at the draft industrial complex yes, in sir. a positive light. Okay. Just be so proud of the way that you have impacted NFL fans on the internet that this many people are finding ways to pump out content about different <laughs> players. That's you need to be proud at this moment because that's really what it is. Everybody that likes football mm -hmm. feels like the draft might be their opportunity to dive on in and right. break through. There are so many different ways that we rate players. My favorite way is the way that we don't know how Brian Gutekunst does. So yeah. like, I think my favorite thing is just to gather information on players. Think of it to then be able to react on the draft show to whatever Goody's going to do. Cause he's going to do some wild stuff on draft night. I just always, there's no way that always. they don't make at there's least some one move. trade on the first yes. two days. Yes. They're going to grab somebody that you do think of, or like last year, they're going to grab Lucas Van Ness who for two months, two months, I was saying, listen, 
as long as they don't draft the kid from Iowa. We're all going to be celebrating <laughs> Thursday night. He did it just to just to get you, just to goad you, just to twist the knife a little bit. He knew I was bit. only he knew I was only, you know, 200 couple feet away yards away or feet away. So, yeah, he had to just turn that knife in the back. But listen, it works out and I'll be the one with egg on my face. My favorite part of the draft. I love being wrong and then being able to emphasize when I'm wrong enough that people will laugh about it. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't think that's going to happen this year. I think you're going to be spot on in that's every analysis. Yes. You're going to be yes. you're going to be ahead of the curve. Every dude the Packers take is going to be a guy that you you were absolutely in love with throughout the process and then that's going to come through on your radio broadcast. I can't wait to listen. God, that is the hype that I cannot <laughs> wait for. And I can't wait for the Cheesehead TV draft guide that's oh, coming, coming on next on. Wednesday, baby. Next, on next on. Wednesday. I throw I saw Al's teaser for it and I got juiced going to be fun anybody uh watching this on youtube can find a link to uh the draft guide announcement uh right in the description of this video coming out wednesday april 3rd it's going to be exciting stuff man exciting stuff always exciting with billy schmidt from 97.3 the game billy as always it's been a pleasure and uh look forward to talking to you next week and throughout the offseason you're the goods man we'll talk next week